In MasterCam 2025, we introduced a new feature as part of the Dynamic Mill toolpath, and that was the ability to add finish passes within the toolpath. We created a What's New video that goes over the basics of that functionality, and I'd like to explore this toolpath a little more. On my screen here, we have a part that was programmed a few years ago. And as you can see, Operation 6 here has a dynamic toolpath with, with depth cuts. And Operation 7 is just a contour toolpath that finishes the wall. And this is what we had to do back then. So I want to take a look at Operation 6 and dial this in and use the Finish Pass option so we no longer need that separate toolpath. So the first thing I'm going to do in Operation 6 is I'm going to turn off or set the stock to lead to zero because this is going to be part of our, our roughing toolpath and our finishing toolpath. So we're not going to leave anything on the wall and we're going to turn depth cuts off and click OK. So this is the dynamic toolpath without any finish pass turned on. And let's zoom into this area right here and just do a quick back plot and we'll see as expected the toolpath comes along right up to the wall and finishes out this area. Now I want to point out because we're going to look at this in a little bit I want to point out that these these curves here they're essentially a toolpath radius and we have an option in the dynamic mill toolpath to change that radius which is very useful when you're getting into tight corners so we'll, we'll look at that in a minute. So the next thing I want to do now is go back into this toolpath and let's turn on our finish passes. So we have a whole separate section for finish passes and I'm going to enable finish passes with a spacing of 0.1. That's the exact same spacing that we left originally that we had the contour toolpath finish up. So now we're going to do it all in one toolpath. Okay, so as you can see here, if we backplot this toolpath, we have our dynamic motion that's expected. But along these walls, you can see here that we're staying away just a little bit. And that's because we're going to come back with our finish pass. So if I go to the end of the model here, and let's just click on this area right here to set the toolpath to that motion. As I step through this, and let's turn on interpolate. As I step through it, again, it's hugging that wall like a contour toolpath, but I want to point out that it's going through the channel, which it should, right? We're expecting this. So what happens now if, if we realize, you know, we want to add a little more spacing, so we want that finish pass to, to cut away a little more material. So let's go back into this and set this to 0.5 or half a millimeter and click OK. So now the toolpath is, is going to be cutting less um, in that channel. And as you can see, the dynamic toolpath doesn't even fit in that channel now. Again, because of our stock to leave for finishing. But take a look at what happens to our finishing pass. So the roughing comes through with a dynamic mill toolpath as expected. It can't fit in there. But the finish pass follows that. And this is key because what it's doing now is instead of going through that channel and finishing the wall like our contour toolpath would, it's respecting the fact that the fact that the dynamic milling toolpath couldn't fit in there, and it's doing the same thing. So why is it doing this? It's doing this because of an option that's turned on by default, and that option is called minimize burial. This makes it so our toolpath is in a safe cutting condition as it's roughing and finishing. If I turn this off and click OK, we see now that we don't, have, we don't have necessarily an optimal cutting scenario because we're roughing it with our dynamic motion, but then our finishing pass is coming around and it's going to go right through this material that was not machined previously. So that's why minimized burial is turned on by default. So let's take another step. We'll go back in and turn that back on. And while we're at it, we have the spacing set to 0.5. So let's do this. Let's go in and change our tool to a smaller, let's say a six millimeter tool. So that might fit, right? And on our cutting, our cutting parameters, we still have zero to leave on the stock and the walls. And under finished passes, we're gonna be leaving half a millimeter along the walls. We'll click okay. 
And we now see that we have our dynamic toolpath motion. Minimize burial is turned on to be safe, but we can clearly get through that channel. And that's really the benefit of having this finished toolpath or finished pass within the dynamic mill um, settings. Because we have our finished parameters right here. The finished toolpath is going through and cleaning up that wall nicely. Okay, so as you can see, having the option to enable finish passes within the dynamic mill toolpath is a game changer. In this example, we no longer need to use a separate contour toolpath. We also saw that in certain machining situations such as this, the minimize burial function modified our toolpath motion to keep us from over-engaging our tool. It's also important to point out that this functionality is available in our area mill toolpath as well. So I encourage you to explore the finish pass option the next time you're using these toolpaths.